This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in northeast Mississippi called Columbus and the surrounding area of Lowndes County. And sometimes I venture out into other areas of the state, as I will today. Today's episode is about Mrs. George Ensminger Sr., otherwise known as Hilma Barnes Freeman Ensminger. In December of 1924, Mrs. George Ensminger made fudge to send to her almost seven-year-old stepson, George Jr., along with the policeman's uniform, a box of paints for his Christmas pet presents. It was sent through the post from their home in Columbus, Mississippi, to little George in Olean, New York, where the child lived with his grandparents, his mother, and his grand aunt. Miss Harriet Mosher. Miss Mosher apparently tasted the candy and a fig that somehow ended up in the box, even though one wasn't sent, and she felt quite ill and was in hospital in critical condition. It was determined by her doctor. She had eaten candy and a fig laced with a shaved blue poison tablet containing bichloride of mercury a deathly mix. A warrant was issued from New York for the arrest of George Enzinger's wife, Hilma, in Columbia, Mississippi. Little George was the child of George Sr. and his first wife, Marjorie Alice Turner Enzinger. Marjorie, Little George, and Miss Mosher lived in the same house at 309 North 5th Street in Olea, New York, with Marjorie's parents. It was a large three, three-story three Victorian home in a bucolic neighborhood. The house, according to the 1925 New York Census, was filled with Marjorie's family, including her parents, her aunt, her adult siblings, and their children. Marjorie, George Jr.'s mother, was a milliner in Olean, a small town in southwest New York State a little to the east of Jamestown. It is known for bootleggers and rum runners during Prohibition. That is its only claim to fame, pretty much. It was a safe haven for criminals as long as they kept their noses cleaned while in the town. Al Capone was a frequent visitor from Chicago. When things got too hot in Chicago, he would come and stay in Olean. Olean became known as Little Chicago. George Sr., who would, who, <clears throat> George Sr., at the time he married Marjorie, was living in Greenville, where he was designing golf, a golf course. He happened to go to Memphis, Tennessee, where he met Marjorie, and they would fall in love. They would return for their marriage in Memphis at Calvary Episcopal Church for the 19th of June, 20, 1917, issue of the Commercial Appeal. They left from their wedding to live in Greenville. At some point after that, their son was born about 10 months later, and the couple would separate, and she and her husband would return to Olean. George Sr., who was, a, was away at war, would return to Columbia after the war and would eventually marry Hilma Barnes Freeman, who had a young son of her own named Rodney Freeman from a previous marriage. Hilma was from Columbia, Mississippi. Hilma, George Jr., and her son, little Rodney, were struggling in the Christmas of 1924 because George was unemployed. We know this because Hilma tells little George this in the note she sends with the candies and the police uniform and the paint pots. She pins, Daddy has been out of work for nearly four months, but he will be working again real soon. So don't think he has forgotten you and your money will be on the way this month. What a strange thing to tell a six-year-old. She told Junior about his new brother, another Junior, what it, which is what they called Rodney, who was, quote, turning six. 
Could Hilma actually be guilty of trying to murder George Jr. with the candy? If the family was already struggling with George Sr.'s continued unemployment, monthly child support sent to New York must have been a significant burden. Hilma must have resented their savings dwindling. And it was sent, and that was, must have resented their savings dwindling as it was sent north for George's child support while her own child was there with them and possibly going without. Or was it something else? The district attorney in Olean, New York, wanted Hilma extradited from Mississippi to stand trial in New York for attempted first-degree murder. Hilma swore she and her cook had innocently made the candy back in Mississippi, and she would fight extradition. She remained in Columbia while her husband went would go on to the Gulf Coast and go to Gulfport to build a golf course. George Sr., a golf pro, was a Buffalo, New York native who had originally come to Mississippi in 1909 with Burt Jones, the founder of Gulfport. George designed and laid out the first golf course in Gulfport. He would leave to build more golf, more golf courses at Jackson, Greenville, and Columbia. While It was while working in the Greenville course and while he was visiting Memphis that he met that first wife, as I have referred to previously. In 1917, he joined the Army Engineers, and that was when his wife returned north during the war years after their child was born in Mississippi, et cetera, et cetera. She would return home to raise him, and so she and George separated. 1922, George arrived in Columbia to design a country club in Columbia, Mississippi, and met Hilma and fell in love. In 1924, he would return to New York to divorce his first wife so he could come back and marry Hilma. His first wife was awarded alimony, and the child George Jr. was awarded to the custody of his maternal grandmother, not Marjorie, instead to her parents. George Sr. then returned to Mississippi, married the wealthy divorcee, Hilma, in June of 1924. Hilma's family was a well-respected and widely known family from Columbia, uh, George and Hilma tried to gain custody of George Jr. from his ex-wife starting soon after uh, their marriage. Back to the attempted poisoning or the alleged attempted poisoning. Olean's prosecutor sent the extradition papers to New York's Governor Smith for his signature. Smith refused to sign them. Governor Smith's friend, Governor Whitfield of Mississippi, had conducted his own investigation into the packaging and mailing of the candy. The candy and child's police uniform and paint box were apparently delivered to the post office for packaging in the Innsminger's small Mississippi town of Columbia. The investigation revealed that there were only three items in the original box and no fig when it left the post office. Was this all a setup by the boy's northern family to frame the stepmother and the father to prevent the boy leaving the custody of his grandparents to be returned to his father? Were they afraid of losing the child or just the child's support that they controlled? Or did Hilma get away with attempted murder because her husband had been Governor Whitfield's personal golf coach and subsequently his good friend? Well, uh, Hilma was exonerated because it was found that the aunt, Miss Hattie Mosier, who claimed to have eaten a poisoned candy, was not poisoned at all based on exams by New York State poison experts and New York State physicians and based on Governor Henry Lewis Whitfield's postal investigation back in Mississippi. George Jr. stayed in New York and would eventually go to work in the oil and gas industry after growing up and serving in World War II honorably. He would move to Bellingham, Washington to raise his family and where he is buried. Hilma and George stay married at least as far as we can find. 
she, he he eventually dies in 1951 and she remarries a man named Smart and they live until his death in Houston, Texas. At that point, she's age 85 and moves closer to her son Rodney in Hattiesburg. And by age 94, she's living in, in a nursing facility and dies and is buried in Hattiesburg. George died in 1951 at age 62 in Miami, Florida. He is buried at the Miami City Cemetery. Now, what is the connection to Columbus, Mississippi? Well, Governor Whitfield is buried at Friendship Cemetery in Columbus, Mississippi. I took you on a little bit of a boondoggle to find that, but that is your connection to the Tom Bigby Tales. And until next time, I'm Shannon Evans.